In a previous video called Data Analysis Networks in DIN, we explored the idea of representing a statistical analysis graphically as a directed network. Each node in the network is a step in the analysis, and each arc a logical connection between steps. This kind of network representation has many advantages. First, it provides a more faithful record of the typically nonlinear history of a data analysis. Second, networks are easily displayed on a high resolution monitor and can be interacted with using a pointing device like a mouse. Software developed on this model provides powerful tools for carrying out and managing a statistical analysis. Third, and perhaps most importantly, the network representation and its interactive display encourage the statistician to visualize the analysis as an entity itself. Viewed at this level, over time and possibly over many different analyses, patterns of analysis steps will emerge. Minimally, these will be collections of only a few steps each, but potentially could involve many sub-analyses. In any case, it would be valuable to capture any patterns identified so that they can be used as building blocks in future analyses. In the present video, we propose to have the user capture these patterns graphically. By pointing out a pattern in an existing analysis, a program is created which will produce that pattern in new analyses. Since no code is actually written or even seen by the user, we call this technique graphical programming. In this section, we review properties of, it, of analysis maps. Analysis maps are the windows where we actually view the network representing the statistical analysis. Here we have a statistical analysis on some data, some demographic data, on 49 different countries. In this particular network, there are only six nodes, four at the top and two at the bottom. The four at the top represent data <clears throat> from the countries, the actual names of the countries, the gross national product per capita, the infant deaths per 1,000 live births, and the number of people per physician in that country. As we see, there are arcs connecting some of these nodes. These are logical links indicating that from these data items, we went down and had, did another step in the analysis. These small boxes here actually represent sub-analyses. And as you can see, when I click on them with the mouse, they highlight and I can get a menu from the left button of the mouse which will extract information from these individual nodes. The menu is I can name the, the node, I can edit some notes on it which may contain more information about what this node is. I can zoom in on and inspect the uh, internal details of that node. This is available on each node, and if I zoom in on this small box, we see that it is a sub-analysis. Zooming in will produce another analysis map, much like the one we're just doing. So let's zoom in, and an analysis map will pop up on top of this one. Here we go. So here's an analysis map that represents a sub-analysis of the larger analysis. And you can see that this one's far more complex. In the top left corner contains a couple of box plots, one here and one here. Again, I could zoom in on these and see what they contained. In the bottom left corner is another sub-analysis. This analysis is within this particular sub-analysis, which is contained in the larger analysis. Analysis maps can be nested to arbitrary depths. In that way, we can confine our attention to any particular part of the analysis that we're interested in. <clears throat> if go to the right here, we see that there are a few more nodes, a bivariate regression, a scatter plot from the bivariate regression, also a least squares fit from that bivariate regression. These again represent steps in the analysis, and from the least squares fit we can see that there are a variety of residual plots done. Residual versus fit, a histogram, and a quantile plot. An interesting property of these nodes is, is that we, if we do a middle button selection, a menu pops up that allows us to take new steps from that node in the analysis. If 
I look at class specific methods from a library of these squares, for example, you can see that from here I can extract a variety of residual plots, residuals versus x, residual versus index, etc. Other interesting features, I can extract data items from this particular fit. And from a least squares fit, we see that we have available residuals, fitted values, the estimate of sigma squared, the intercept estimate, etc., the R squared degrees of freedom. So an important part of the analysis map is that we represent each step in the analysis as a node in the network. Logical links between the nodes are shown as arcs. We can access information on each of the nodes and we can ask that new actions be taken from each node. In this way we can continue the analysis from any particular node in the map. Sort of emphasizing the nonlinear structure of a statistical data analysis.